Good morning. As you come in, go ahead and share this live stream. Invite somebody on. Thank you for joining. As you come in, go ahead and let us know that you are on here by saying hello and actually um, letting us know where you're from. If this is the first time that you've been joining us for Wild and Root Empowerment um, as a Destiny Traveler. I bring you um, empowerment teachings on Wednesday and Friday, Central Standard Time around 7.15. Today, I'm a little late. I couldn't find my uh, devices to hook everything up. So I'm just a tad bit um, behind this morning, but we're generally on here around 7.15, 7.20-ish. As you come in, go ahead and say hello and let us know that you are watching and where you're watching from. Share this live stream. Go ahead and like it and share it to your networks, your timeline, your uh, friends. Invite somebody on. Um, I want to encourage you, if you have not gone back and listened to the Holy Spirit series of teachings that we were doing, I would encourage you to do that. Go back and watch those teachings because I believe that they will really bless you. And I think we did like a three week series concerning the Holy Spirit, how to be filled with the Holy Spirit, how to be led with the Holy Spirit, how to partner with the Holy Spirit. We did a whole series on that for the last three weeks. And I want to encourage you to go and watch those. Share this live stream. Go ahead and like the live stream. Make sure you're commenting so that other people can um, see these videos and be inspired and encouraged by them. If you are inspired by what we say, you're welcome to send stars. Stars help us financially to be able to do what we are doing and continue to give more content on social media and fulfill this part of our assignment. Again, while in route empowerment for those of you that are destiny travelers and for those of you that are inspired and encouraged to fulfill your mandate and your assignment in the earth. You just don't want to journey and travel in the earth and be a pilgrim passing through and not complete the mission and your part of God's great vision. You want to be a vessel that God can flow through for kingdom purpose. You want to be able to be a vessel that can partner with the Holy Spirit to fulfill the assignment that God gave you before time began, that God placed on the inside of you to fulfill so that God could get the glory out of your life, out of your story, out of the things that you have been through so that God's will can manifest through you. If you are interested in any of my books, I've written four published books. You can go to my website, you can go to Amazon, Barnes, Barnes and Noble, wherever books are sold www.touchdownsenterprise.com. If you are interested in one-on-one um, -on -one coaching or uh, group coaching, you can also find that on my website at www.touchdownsenterprise.com. Okay, we are really going this topic today. Oh my goodness, it is just really blessing me. Okay, so... I really want to try to take my time with this. So you guys are going to have to bear with me on this particular topic because I really believe that God is just going to speak to us and show us some things that will ignite our prayer life. Type in the comments, it ignite me, God, ignite me, God. Sometimes when you're journeying with God and with the Holy Spirit, it, is, it can often be a long journey if you're not aware of what that partnership with God needs to look like, how to walk with the Holy Spirit, or given a pattern 
to see an individual walk with God and walk with the Holy Spirit and actually start to see prayers manifest in their life to the degree that they say, I prayed about this and here it is. I asked God for this and here it is. God told me that this was going to happen and here it is. When God wanted to do something through an individual, when God wanted an individual to um, fulfill and mandate Brittany and an assignment, he would often give a pattern. And he told Moses, I am going to show you a pattern. I'm going to show you a copy of what I want you to build in the earth. I'm going to show you what's in heaven so that you can replicate the same thing that is in heaven in the earth. Remember, as it is in heaven, so let it be on earth. So even when God started uh, moving Abraham out and he gave Abraham a copy, a pattern, uh, 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 um, a example of what God was going to do for Abraham. He told him that he was going to make out of him a great nation, that his children, when Abraham was barren, God said, your children are going to be so numerous. They're going to be like the stars. He gave him in a pattern to look to. He said, look to the stars, Abraham. Can you count them? He said, if you cannot count them, this is what I'm getting ready to do for you. I'm going to cause what is in the heavens. I'm going to cause this type of manifestation to happen in your life. Often when God wants to do something in us, through us, or with us, he will give us something to look to. Even Mary, when she began to um, say yes to the will of the Lord, she said, so be it unto me to the angel as you have spoken. And the, the angel admonished her to go visit her cousin Elizabeth because Elizabeth, well, Elizabeth, who was pregnant with John, was also a pattern or a type of what God was doing with Mary. So that type, that pattern, that example of what God was getting ready to do for Mary, the miracle that was performed for Elizabeth, God was saying, when you look to her, you're going to be edified. You're going to be encouraged. You're going to know that this thing is possible. And sometimes God puts a person, a vessel, an individual, a messenger, a, um, a somebody that is going ahead of us, somebody that God is raising up so that that person then can become an example before you as you're journeying with God and as you're growing with God and learning how to partner with the Holy Spirit. Why God won't answer your prayers. This topic just leaped in my belly the other morning as I was meditating before the Lord and the Lord began to just minister to me. And I, and I just felt the unction to share this with you. Why won't you answer me, God? I know you've often had that thought, that question. Why is it taking so long? Why isn't God hearing me? Why isn't he responding to me? Why did this happen? Or why did my prayer not get answered? And I want to kind of open up this uh, topic. And if you ever have questions in the comment section, you can write those because I do see them. But you must give StreamYard permission. This is just a viewing platform that I'm using to connect to social media. So in order for me to see your comments, you're going to have to give StreamYard permission so that I can see your comments. So anytime you have any questions, type those in there and I'll try to keep my eye on the chat so that I can watch for your comments. So type that in the comments. Why aren't you answering me? God, why aren't you answering me? Why are you slow to hear me? Why aren't you speaking to me? Why aren't you showing me the way? I want to pose this question. When you pray, what's in it for God? When you pray, what is in your prayer that benefits God? What does God get out of answering your prayer? What is God's pleasure out of answering your prayer? What? How does it benefit God's great vision? The God, the Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit are all working in tandem to complete God's great vision. 
God is just not interested in answering your play prayers so that you can have pleasures on earth. God wants to answer prayers that benefit his vision. God wants to answer prayers that benefit him. How do your prayers be answered benefit God? Do they just help you? Do they just give you peace of mind? Do they just give you finances to live fat off the hog and just eat everything and consume everything and have pleasures of life? Or do your prayers have a interest with God? Does God have an interest in what you're praying for? Does God get something out of your prayers being answered? How do we get these prayers to manifest? Why are my prayers not being heard? Why is God not hearing me? Am I missing something? Am I not praying effectively? Am I praying amiss? Am I praying outside of God's will? Am I not uh, uh, positioned properly? Am I, does, do I have sin in my life to the degree that God is not hearing me? Here it is. What is in it for God? Type in the comments. What's God's interest? What's God's interest? What does God have to say about the thing that you're praying for, about the person that you're praying for, about the healing that you're praying for? What's God gonna get out of it? Father, we thank you for this time of sharing. We thank you for those that would hear. We thank you, Father, for those that would receive, those that would be ignited, those that will be set ablaze in their prayer time, those that will get revelation. We thank you for your word that we rightly divide your word of truth. Holy Spirit, sit upon us, wisdom, counsel, reverence for the Lord, revelation. We thank you, Father, that you lead us and guide us into all truth. We thank you, Father, that we will not hear a stranger's voice because we are your sheep. We thank you, Father, that we will not hear off revelation, that we will not hear the voice of the stranger, but we will hear the voice of God. We thank you for prophetic utterance. We thank you, Father, for eyes to see, ears to hear, a heart to receive, a mind to obey, light be. So, confess your fault. This is James chapter 5 and 16. Type that in the comments, James chapter five and 16. Confess your faults one to another and pray, pray one for another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man availeth much. Please share this to your timeline. Please share this to your networks. James chapter five and 16. I want to focus on the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. How do I get my prayers to become effectual, fervent? God says you got to get in a righteous positioning with God. You have to get in right standing with God. That signifies the areas of your life have to become in divine alignment, in the right positioning, in the right order, in the right structure. I need to be connected with the right people. I need to have the right motive of my heart. I need to have a right perspective of God. Here it is, the world, Satan, and myself. Jesus, God, type that in the comments, the world, Satan, and myself. In order to have this righteous experience with God, I have to have a correct perspective of my placement in God's great vision. I have to come become spiritually intelligent on how to operate as a righteous man. Jesus. I have to have a correct perspective of who God is, who I am, what my assignment is, what my authority is. I have to have a correct perspective on the enemy, what his motive is, because we have to understand our adversary. We have to know our adversary. We have to know his tricks and tactics. 
tactics in order to be effectual and fervent in prayer, in order to hit the bullseye each time so that we hear the answer coming from heaven, so that we hear the sound of the abundance of rain, so that we hear that thing which we're praying for began to manifest. Type in the comments, manifest now. So James chapter four, verse one through five says, from whence come wars, here it is, and fightings among you, come that come they not hence, even of your lust that war in your members. Ye lust and have not. Ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. Ye fight and war yet have ye, yet ye have not because ye ask not. Here it is. Ye ask and receive not. You're asking, but you're not receiving. There are things that you're desiring to have, but you're going about getting them the wrong way. You're trying to uh, fulfill these desires, but the action steps that you're taking are off because you have not received an answer as to what you're supposed to do to get your prayers to manifest. James chapter four, verse one through five. When you have time, I really encourage you to let these scriptures that I'm giving you minister to you. So you're lusting after this thing in your own flesh. You're taking liberties within yourself. You're asking God, but you're not receiving. Here it is, because you ask amiss. What is amiss? I'm asking outside of God's will. I'm asking with the wrong motive. I'm asking not understanding what the will of God is. I'm asking not understanding what God is doing. I'm asking not understanding what God's position is in my experience, in my situation. I'm asking God to move something that he wants to use. Jesus. Jesus, I'm asking God to move something that's ordained to build me up, that's ordained to strengthen me. So if I'm asking him to remove something, but I'm not seeing that thing removed, so then I have to go back to God and say, what are you doing? What is it that you're trying to manifest here? Why is this thing not moving? What is it that you're trying to do in me? So you really have to have a relational aspect with God to succeed in prayer. And that comes from your righteous experience. That comes from getting in alignment with God in every area of your life. So that when you ask, you do receive because you're not asking amiss. You're not asking outside of God's will. You're not asking without intention. You're not asking, but not hitting the, uh, the target. You're not asking with the wrong motive. Of. You're asking as it is in heaven, so let it be on earth. Jesus gave the disciples a peek into how to get their prayers answered. Jesus said, come to God out of a relational aspect, our father, come to God out of relationship. And when you come out of relationship, then you start asking him for what's in heaven. Mm. Jesus. So what's in heaven concerning your marriage? What's in heaven concerning your health? What's in heaven? So it's based on relationship. Type in the comments. You must have relationship in order to get your prayers answered. You're going to have to have relationship. We cannot come to God thinking that we're going to get all of the goodies out of God void of relationship. He is a relational God. He is a God to be experienced. So when we don't have relationship, we then forfeit what is in heaven on earth. You want to get your prayers answered. Start becoming intimate with God. Don't just come to God for what he has, but seek him for his righteousness. Seek ye first the kingdom, God's government, God's rule, God's established authority in your life on earth as it is in heaven. Begin to seek forth the kingdom of God and out of that seeking, out of that relationship 
relationship. He says, all these things that you need are going to just be added onto you. It's not going to be something that you have to ask for. It's just going to be added. Why? Because I am in right standing. The kingdom of God is in operation and the kingdom of God is the government in which I live. The kingdom of God is what I'm seeking for. I'm seeking for God's rule in my life. I'm seeking for God's government in my life. I'm seeking for what's in heaven to manifest on earth. So he says, ye ask and receive not because you are asking amiss that here it is that ye may consume it in, upon your lust, that you may consume it in your own flesh, that you may have pleasure out of it, that you may eat this thing. You're asking because it's going to bring you pleasure, but what does God get out of delivering your husband? What does God get out of saving your children? What does God get out of it? What is God saying about them? Are you praying forth the will of God? Are you praying forth that God will save your husband so that he can be the preacher? that God ordained for him to be so that he can preach to the nation so that he can win souls so that he can fulfill his assignment so he can be the father to that child that you are raising up that has a mandate on their life why are you praying are you just praying so that you can consume the answer in your own flesh are you praying this thing so that you can have pleasure are you praying for an increase in your finances so you can stunt or are you praying so that you can be a benefit to the kingdom? Are you praying because you walked past that homeless person and you didn't have a hundred dollars to lay in their hand? You didn't have the money to go put them up in a hotel. Are you praying for resources to do kingdom business? Or are you just praying for it to consume it in your own flesh? Jesus. Jesus, what is the motive behind what you're praying for? You have to become spiritually intelligent so that you know how to do dealings with God. Oh, Jesus, share this to your live stream. In our flesh, we want we lust, our spirit lusts after things. Our spirit doesn't want to be uncomfortable for things, or, or should I say our soul. Our soul doesn't want, in our human spirit, void of the Holy Spirit, we want things to consume. We want our, our spirit lust. Adam and Eve fell in the garden because of the lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, and the pride of life. And we too still experience those three areas of lust, forbidden desires fulfilled. The, the lust is what is forbidden. We go after what is forbidden. We have to get to the point where everything in our being is submitted under the lordship of Jesus Christ and under the will of God. And when we're praying, we're not praying to fulfill our own pleasures. We're not praying to fulfill our own desires. We're not praying for the big ministry to make ourselves look good. We're not praying for these things to make ourselves feel good. We're not praying for these things to uh, get back at other people. We're not praying for the things that we're praying for so that we can be comfortable in our flesh. What is God's interest in what you're praying for? What is he getting out of this? Type in the comments. What does God get out of my prayers? What does he get out of it? What's God's glory? out of your prayer being answered. Remember he said that men will see your good works and glorify the father. Everything in our lives as kingdom ambassadors is supposed to glorify God. Everything, everything about us is supposed to magnify him. When he exalts us, it's supposed to be bring glory to him, not for us to consume it in our own flesh. We go back to the book, we go back to when God, healed King Hezekiah. And I believe this is in Isaiah, if I'm not mistaken, Isaiah 55, uh, around the 55th uh, chapter. When God um, healed K King Hezekiah, King Hezekiah began to move in pride. He began to say, 
He didn't even acknowledge what God had done. And God had to deal with him because he didn't bring glory back to God for God healing him. Even God answering his prayer for healing, he didn't turn around and bring that glory back to God. So sometimes God can't trust us to answer our prayers because he knows we, he won't get the glory. And God had to deal with King Hezekiah because he moved in pride and took that glory for himself and didn't exalt the Lord God who brought the healing. When God does it, are you going to go back to your old ways? God knows our hearts. He knows if he answers the prayer too soon before we acknowledge him, before we understand him, us, Satan, the world, before we get to a position of righteous standing to the degree that our motives are pure for wanting our prayers answered, our motives are in God's interest. And when he does it, all the glory is going to go to him. We'll say nobody did this but God. God told me to do this. God told me to shut my mouth. God told me to write the book. God told me to do this. All these things are happening because God willed it, because it's in heaven concerning me. Will you bring the glory back to God or will you consume it in your own flesh? Will you just go back to a comfortable life when God restores your marriage, when God heals your body? Or will you keep pressing? Will you keep pressing through? Some things God will allow us to keep going through so that we can get to the place of yieldedness, so that we can get to the place where we acknowledge him, so that we can get to the place where we don't want to get the glory for anything that he's doing. He said, no one will take my glory, Jesus. So when he answers you, are you going to give it back to God? Are you going to say, God, uh, God did this. God delivered my family. God gave me a house. God lifted my finances. God turned this around. God gave me this ministry. God healed my marriage. I take no credit for what God has done. That's when you're not consuming it in your own flesh. That's when you're saying God gave me favor to help others. God gave me resources to help others, to bring others up. That's how he gets the glory. Come on, type in the comments. I won't take your glory. A lot of people built ministries, but they're not giving God the glory. A lot of people get married. They wait for marriage, but they don't give God the glory. They go back on God. God knows what's in man. But man doesn't know what's in God. He said, are you, you're asking and you're not receiving because all you want to do is consume it in your own flesh. You just want to consume that thing. You just want to enjoy that thing. How do God, how does God get the glory out of hearing you? What has God said about your children? What has God said about your ministry? Are you committed to giving that thing back to God? We look at the life of Hannah. When Hannah was praying that the Lord would open up her womb. Here it is. God closed up Hannah's womb and God opened up Hannah's womb. And Hannah turned around and gave her child back to God. Uh, will you give that thing back to God? Can you be trusted? Can you be trusted to give your body when he heals your body back to God? No. Can you be trusted? This is a serious thing. Why won't God answer you for your husband? When God does it, will you be comfortable enough to keep going to church? You going now because you're uncomfortable, but will you keep going when God does it or will you stop? Will you set a standard and a precedent in your home for God? God did it and God is the one that got to sustain it. That's what Hannah understood when she gave her child back to God. She said, God did this and God has to sustain this child. Jesus. When God causes your prayers to manifest, to be birthed in the earth, will you commit it back to God? Will you say, God, my marriage is holy unto you. God, my finances are holy unto you. The promotion that you gave me is holy unto you. Jesus, 
So will God be able to tell you what to do with the money? Will God be able to tell you what to do with the favor? Will God be able to tell you what to do with the ministry? You got to vet your own heart. You got to know God, know Satan, know the world and know yourself. Prayer, proper intelligence in prayer, being able to legislate with God to a degree that God responds to your prayers. Jesus. He says, you're going to consume that thing in your own flesh. That's not why, that's why I'm not answering you. I'm not opening up your womb, Hannah, until you get to a place that you're willing to give that thing back to me. My God, my God, my God today, Jesus, Jesus, type in the comments, make that vial. God, I'll give it back to you. God, I won't take the glory. God, I won't do this thing to make myself please. I'll do this thing so that you get the glory. I'll respond and give it back to you. I'll give my children back to you. Come on. When we have friendship with the world, he then talks about this, having friendship with the world. You see, the world is about consuming everything. The world is about their pleasures. Me and my four and no more. The world is about eating up and being a consumer. But the kingdom of God is about investment, investing in God's interest, investing in the kingdom of heaven, investing in people, investing in resources, investing in land, investing time. The world is about consuming consuming, wanting, lusting, everything that you desire that is forbidden, you go after it. Listen, everything that you desire is not good for you because the flesh will lust after things that will take you off course with the will of God. Jesus. So to be friendship with the world, when I want to look like the world, when I want to do trends because the world is doing every trend, I get on every trend because the world is, is playing a specific song and people are going viral off of a, 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 specific, a specific song being played. The hashtags are this. So I need to put the hashtags like this. Friendship with the world is enmity with God. Trying to do what the world does in the church is enmity against God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Trying to market like the world is enmity against God. We have to be in relationship with God to follow every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. We have to follow the blueprints of God. We have to follow the ways of God. Listen, when God, when the nation of Israel was uh, 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 about to be uh, annihilated. They were about to be taken out. And Queen Esther ended up in a position of authority. She ended up marrying the king. I think his name is Xerxes. And she was a Jew, but her she was incognito. <laughs> he divorced one wife, married her, she gets in authority. There's a plot to kill the Jews. But then her uncle Mordecai comes to her and says, listen, you got to go before your husband, the king. And she's like, I can't go before the king. If I go be before him without being invited, I'm dead. And she had the people fast and pray. What was in the interest of Esther's prayer? For God's persevering, uh, preserving of his great vision. Because the great vision of God entailed the nation. Come on. So when Esther went before the Lord, it was not only what, what Mordecai said, don't forget you one of us. So when this thing gets exposed, you dead too. So not only did she have to go in intercession for herself, but she had to go into intercession for God's great vision. How, how does what you're praying for coincide with God's great vision. Mm. What's on your husband? What's on your children? What's on your money? What's on your career? How do you fit in God's great vision? How does, how does the resistance stop you from fulfilling God's plan? 
You got to find a loophole in prayer. So, so he says friendship with the world is enmity against God. I'm not saying that you won't do some of the patterns, the things that we see in the world because we have to live in this world system and be able to move strategically by God so that we can succeed while we're here on earth. So we have to become kingdom minded using kingdom principles, tactics in order to move in and out of earth system. So what we have to do is have our ear close to his voice. Every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. That's what we should live by. That's, and that's relationship. You, it, It's not enough to have the logos. You have to have relationship. You have to be in a prophetic community. You have to be prophetic. You have to be able to hear, see, and discern God. You have to have relationship with God. It's just not enough to look in the scripture and put your finger down on the scripture and say, I'm believing right here. No, I need to have relationship relationship so I know exactly what God is saying so I'm able to hit the bullseye in prayer and I'm not praying all off I'm not wasting time praying things that God is not going to answer Jesus having a pity party in prayer if this is good type this is blessing me so he says friendship with the world when you're trying to pray don't pray to get the world's results Listen to my voice. Here it is. God is not going to take you the same route that he took the world. God can cause you to bypass what the world's process is. God can cause you to bypass what the world is saying. But if you don't have an ear to hear him, if you don't follow his instructions, if you're trying to pattern yourself after the world, you're missing God. You're going to be praying for something that's going to take you years to get because you're not discerning God. You're not understanding where you are in God's great vision. You don't understand what your assignment is. You don't have a pattern. Somebody that is that you're walking with that's getting results in prayer so that they like today. I am showing you this because I had to walk this. Because I had to get closer to God to hear what he had to say, to follow his voice, to hear his instructions, to receive his blueprint, to receive his yes, to see him manifest the things that I was praying for. Type in the comments. It is possible. It's possible to see your prayers answered because we have a prayer answering God. But how are you praying? What is the motive of your prayers? What is motivating you to pray? Is the Holy Ghost interceding for God's great vision in your life? Is the Holy Ghost interceding so that God can have pleasure through you? Not that you can have pleasure through your prayers being answered. Why does God want to give you that house? What is it for? Why does God want to give you that car? How does he get glory? Are you giving the glory back to him? Come on. Are you helping others? In their pursuit, how are you being a help to the body? How are you showing forth the praises of God? Or are you just consuming it in your flesh? Now, listen, God can answer prayers or we can make our prayers happen. Ah, Jesus. Did you like this video? If you didn't like it, go out and like it and come back in. Share it to somebody. Send it to their inbox. Send it to your networks. Share it to your timeline. Okay, so. Do not be friends with the world. Walk with God and be wise. Do ye think that the scripture saith in vain, the spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy? So here it is. Our human spirit, not the Holy Spirit, our human spirit lust, it wants what others want. It's just what it is. It's just what's in our flesh, but our flesh has to become submissive and subject to the will of God. Our flesh has to obey what God says out of relationship. Yes, you have the logos, but that's, it, it's not, I'm not going to say that's not enough. We have the logos, but we have the Holy Ghost in us that understands the will of God specifically for Sherry Downs. So here it is. Sickness may be for you, God needs to heal you. 
sickness for somebody else, maybe they have to walk through that for a specific assignment. They have to walk through that to gain authority over it. So we have to understand why we're going through what we're going through. We need to get spiritually intelligent and so relational with God to the degree that he tells us why we're going through what we're going through. If he says, I'm breaking generational curses off of you and you got to go through this and you got to choose different, you can't escape this situation. I'm not going to deliver you out of this situation. I'm going to give you authority and power to overcome this situation. I'm going to bring you out as if it never happened. Jesus. Like the Hebrew boys. The fiery furnace. They said, if God doesn't deliver us, we know he can. God didn't stop them from entering into the furnace. God was with them in the furnace. The furnace didn't consume them. There was divine protection in the fire. But we don't like discomfort. God answered their prayers so that that king would bow to their God. The king that wanted to serve idol gods. So God answered their prayers. God was manifesting for them to the degree that the king bowed to their God and declared that their God is God. Who in your life needs to see God manifest for you? Who in your life needs to see the manifestation of your prayers being answered? That God will be glorified in the lives of those that are around you. What does God get? What is he getting out of your prayers? Genesis chapter 18, verse 23 through 28. It discusses the discourse that Moses, I mean, Abraham goes through when God is about to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Remember, Lot, his nephew, pitched a tent towards Sodom and Gomorrah, and Abraham went a different direction. But here it is. God is visiting Abraham, and he's uncovering secrets to Abraham in prayer, saying he knows Abraham has interest in Sodom and Gomorrah, and he cares for Abraham. And because they have a relationship, he's telling Abraham, look, Look, I'm about to take Sodom and Gomorrah out. They, they, they're wicked. The outcry has come up before me. And out of relationship, God reveals his judgment to Abraham. God reveals what's getting ready to happen. Can you be so relational with God to the degree that God would not do anything until he talks to you? Sometimes you're having dreams and visions and God is trying to tell you what he's getting ready to do, but you're not in tune with God enough to know what God is saying to you. He might be saying, look, this is happening and I want to legislate with you. I want to talk with you about this. I want to know what you want me to do. I want to know if, if you want to pray, if you want to intercede, if you want to stand in the gap. I want to know what you have to say concerning this matter. So Abraham and, 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 and God is in this legislative process. My God, in prayer, God is saying to Abraham, I'm getting ready to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. I'm getting ready to deal with this thing. Some of you are in churches where God is revealing to you wickedness, but instead of going to God and legislating, you're going to everybody else and talking. But God is opening your eyes so that you can see what it is, so that you be can become a legislator. Type in the comments, legislate. So, so Abraham knows that his nephew Lot and his family is in this town that God is getting ready to destroy. And so Abraham starts to legislate out of relationship because we know that Abraham is the father of faith and he was coined a friend of God. So God has personal interest in Abraham and Abraham has personal interest in Sodom and Gomorrah. So God is revealing to Abraham what he's getting ready to do because he does not do anything in the earth without first revealing it to his servants, the prophets. Why? Because he wants somebody to stop his, his, his anger. God doesn't want to uh, uh, be angry with man. God doesn't want to exact judgment. God looking for somebody to stand in the gap in prayer so that that person's prayers can be answered. So he says, will, if I find 50 righteous people in the city, Will you really sweep it away and not spare the place for the sake of 50 righteous people? So what do we see here? 
we see Abraham tap into the character of God. Jesus, we see Abraham knew God's interest in righteous people. We see Abraham reveal to God his character. Remember, I told you when you are in prayer with God, you got to know God, know Satan, know the world and know yourself. So what Abraham is doing is appealing to God's righteousness. He's appealing to God's justice that you won't destroy the righteous with the wicked because the righteous are the salt of the earth, because the righteous are the preservers, because the righteous are the light. So God, you won't take the righteous away with the wicked. He says, will you really sweep it away and not spare the place for the sake of 50 righteous people, far be it from you to do such a thing. This ain't like you, God. <laughs> My God. So if God said your husband is going to be a preacher, this ain't like you, God. So if God said that your children are going to be in ministry, this ain't like you, God. Lord, you got to step in because you said this and this situation doesn't look like what you said because I have relationship and I know your character. I know you don't lie. Come on, when you know God, you can legislate with God and God will respond to you. So he's saying, yeah, 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 th this is who I am. <laughs> if, 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 I find if you find 50 righteous, I won't destroy the city. So, so God knew all along what was there, but he was willing to legislate. He was trying to find a way to not exact this judgment. He was trying to, to legislate with Abraham for Sodom and Gomorrah's sake. So he's saying that Abraham spoke up again. And I'll jump down to the 27. Now that I have been so bold to speak to the Lord, though I am nothing but dust and ashes. So we see that Abraham takes a posture of humility. Abraham's like, whoa, God's answering me. God's responding to me. God's legislating with me. God's dealing with me. So he takes a low posture of humility that God would even respond to his prayers, that God would even hear him, that God would even answer him, that God would even acknowledge him. And he says this, I'm dust and ashes. I'm nothing. What do I do to deserve this? So when you are legislating with God, you have to understand that you have to take a posture of humility, knowing who God is, knowing who you are, knowing who Satan is and knowing what the world is. What is the number of the righteous? What if the number of the righteous is five left? He said, OK, if it drops down to 45, if it drops down to 35 and, and he just kept dropping the number, will you not destroy the city? So it goes down to. Uh, uh, I think like less than nothing. <laughs> God's like, yeah, if I find that, I won't destroy the city. What was God doing? God was allowing Abraham to stand in the gap. God was allowing his intercession, his righteousness to speak up for God, Sodom and Gomorrah. He was saying, because you know my character, I will deal with you. Uh, Jesus, what the intercessor is tasked to do is to find what God gets out of their legislation. In God's enacting judgment upon Sodom and Gomorrah, Abraham got out God's interest. There might be righteous people there. Hold up, God. You can't do this thing yet. We got to make sure there's no righteous people among the wicked. We got to make sure you stay within your character. Are y'all getting this? If God is giving you a word, you got to know the character of God. Don't believe the lie that the enemy is telling you and feeding you that God's not going to come through. He don't lie. Just keep interceding. Just keep standing in the gap. Just keep believing God. This intercession that Abraham began to enact, this legislation that Abraham began to enact, pulled on God's character. God's judgment was to do one thing, but God's character was to do another. Mm. Mm. His judgment moved him to destroy, but his character said, I'm looking for a man that will stand in the gap. I'm looking for a man that I don't have to do this thing that I don't want to do because my love is who I am.
So I have to intercede based on what I know about God, based on God's interest. Esther, she interceded based on God's interest. Hannah, she interceded based on God's interest. Her, she said, I'm going to give them back to you, God. And God can trust her heart. God can trust the motive. God can trust the words because what did she do? When he answered, she weaned him and brought him to the temple. Those who do wickedly against the covenant, he shall corrupt with flattery. This is Daniel chapter 11, verse 32. But the people who know their God shall be strong and carry out great exploits. When you know the character of God, you will be strengthened in who he is and you'll be able to carry out great adventures with God. You'll be able to experience the breakthroughs of God. You'll be able to experience your prayers answered. You'll be able to experience the pleasures of God when you know God. When you come out of wickedness, when you step into righteousness, when you surrender everything to God and you know who he is, you begin to experience great exploits. You begin to experience the breakthroughs of heaven. You begin to experience as it is in heaven, so let it be on earth. And your prayers cannot be hindered. Your prayers become fervent and effectual. This is why our prayers can't be founded, established upon our own fleshly desires and pleasures. They must be out of God's pleasure and God's delight. This is why the Holy Spirit will intercede for us because the Holy Spirit is going to only intercede for God's interest. The Holy Spirit is only going to intercede on God's interests, not yours. Oh, Jesus. Oh. Praying in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has one will, and that's to do the will of God. That's to accomplish God's will in you and through you. That's to manifest the will of the father through your life. That is to hear what heaven is saying and make it happen on earth. Out of the father, through the son, achieved by the spirit. The will of God comes out of the father, through the son, achieved by the spirit. All of them are working in tandem with one will. They're not just trying to make you comfortable in life. They're trying to accomplish the will of God. They're trying to get you and make you in, into who you ought to be. And that's why the good and the bad work. Because the bad will push you to pray. The bad will push you to get out of that uncomfortable situation. The bad will push you to leave those people that aren't going where you're going. That don't really want God. That want to play church. The bad will push you towards God. So all things will work because they're going to all make you into who you ought to be. Jesus. This is good. I'm going to, I think I'm going to stop right here and I'm going to save the rest for Friday. So what did we understand? Know God, know the world, know Satan, know yourself, know the motive of why you're praying. What does God get out of it? You got to just have more than scripture. You got to have relationship, relationship with God, relationship with Jesus, relationship with the Holy Spirit. Legislate with God based on his character. Not you being comfortable, not you consuming something in your flesh. Why does God want to give you a new house? Why does God want to give you a new car? Why does God want to give you a pay increase? Why does God want to give you a ministry? Why does God need to save your husband? Why does God need to save your children? What's in it for God? Type that. What's in it for God? I got to find out. 
I got to join journey in relationship to get to know his character. So I can go to God on behalf of God's own vision. What is God's vision for your family? Begin to pray for God's vision for your children, for your grandchildren, for your great grandchildren. Begin to pray and ask God, Lord, help me to be in alignment, to be righteous so that my prayers are effectual and fervent and unhindered. Why? Because I know you. You want to know God to the degree that you can begin to legislate. Legislate with God to get God's manifestation in your life. The prayers. You don't want your prayers to be prayed amiss, not hitting the target, not hitting the bullseye. Why does God need to resurrect something in your life? Why? What does God get out of healing you? What's in it for God? Is it for you to just have a comfortable life so you stop crying because your husband is doing ABC, X, Y, Z because you got, no, because he said he has ministry on his life because souls are attached to him because you said he was a preacher because you said he would love me because you said that he will be the father to this prophet that I'm raising because you said that we will do ministry, God, because of your character and you don't lie. Do this thing for your namesake. That's what he said, for his namesake. Oh, oh, because his name is on the on the line because he put out a word on your family. Oh, my God, because his name, his integrity, his character is on the line because he spoke something out concerning you. God, save him because you said this because your character is this and you do not lie. You got to know God's character. Those that know their God shall do what? Great and mighty exploits. Get to know him. Look through the scriptures. See his patterns. See his movements. See how he responded to people. Learn other people's experiences with God. Become conscious of your experiences. Don't just be doing the works, but you're not understanding what the Holy Ghost is doing. Get to have a relationship with the one that is achieving the will of God. If you're somebody that gets a lot of prophecies, God is speaking to you expressly. He's giving you directives. He's telling you what his will is, but you're missing it. Come out of friendship with the world. Do things according to God's pattern and design. Don't want things because the world has them. Don't try to get on trends and do things. God is the one that does it by his spirit. He says, this, this is what this, the Bible is showing us who God is and how he answers. Not by might, <laughs> nor by power, but by my spirit. So I have to journey with Holy Spirit. I have to have relationship with God's spirit. I have to know where the spirit is leading me, who I'm supposed to link up with, who I'm supposed to follow after, who I'm supposed to partner with, who's supposed to mentor me, what books I'm supposed to read. What is he teaching me now? What is the Holy Spirit? He is a teacher. He leads you and guides you into all truth. What is he leading you to do? Share this to your time. If you're looking for coaching or mentoring, if you're looking for somebody to walk with you to help you journey, I would encourage you to purchase one of my coaching packages. I would encourage you to join my mentorship group. We meet every Tuesday and Saturday. We meet for prayer. Uh, we journey through life together um, by God's design. You want to be somebody that has somebody that is before you that is experiencing the breakthroughs of heaven. Like I told y'all, Mary had Elizabeth. God said, go look to Elizabeth. She has the baby already. She's six months ahead of you. God told Abraham, look up at the stars. God told me, look to this person. That's what I'm doing in you. So, so God will always show you what he's doing. And oftentimes you may not even have a pattern before you. There might not even be somebody that's alive 
that is doing what God wants you to do. So you need people that can come alongside you that understand that. To say what God is doing through you, there's no pattern for. Follow the Holy Spirit until he reveals more. You need people that can discern what's in you. You need people that even if they don't understand, will push you. Jesus. This was good. We're going to finish this off Friday because I got much more to say. I want to encourage you, if you have not purchased any of my books that were scribed through the leadership of the Holy Spirit, go to my website or go to Amazon, Barnes and Noble, wherever books are sold and purchase those books um, that the Holy Ghost wrote through me, um, that the Holy Spirit led me um, to partner with him and write um, www.touchdownsenterprise.com. Thank you guys for being on here with me every Wednesday and Friday. I appreciate you sharing this live stream. I just recently wrote a, wrote a book for all of you women called Women of Weight. It is a powerful book that will help you understand your position in God's great vision and why uh, women fight women. Um, that doesn't have to be named among you. I'm not jealous of any woman <laughs> I've not. That's never been me. That will never be me because that's just not a part of my character. So God has called me to assist and help women, especially those who are in ministry, those who have done church wrong and experience being taught church wrong, that have a wrong perspective of God, that aren't seeing victory in your life. Um, should the Holy Spirit lead you if you felt feel led if you felt feel like the Holy Spirit is in igniting you when you come on here, I would encourage you to come alongside one-on-one um, -on -one coaching or group coaching. Um, listen, when you know God, you're able to legislate. You're able to get your prayers answered. Will your prayers be answered in a week? Maybe, maybe not. Will your prayers be answered tomorrow? Maybe, maybe not. But the key point is God will answer you. He will talk with you. How do I know? Because he's done it for me. I love you guys. All of you destiny travelers. I appreciate your time. Sowing your time to watch this live. Sharing it. Sowing stars. Um, Cash app. Um, somebody put it in the comments. Um, dollar sign number four, purpose coach. If you were blessed, um, if you want to sow a seed through Zell, touchdownsenterprise.com, whichever way the Lord leads you or the Holy Spirit leads you, you want to do what you are inspired to do. When the Holy Spirit moves upon your heart, you're supposed to respond. When he moves upon your heart, when he moves you in your spirit, and not because I'm twisting your arm or because I'm telling you, you know, um, you're going to get a million dollars if you do something. No, because the Holy Spirit pricks you to sow a seed. The Holy Spirit pricks your heart. The Holy Spirit moves upon your heart. The Holy Spirit inspires you. If you feel inspired, that is the Holy Spirit. I want to teach you guys how to walk with the Holy Spirit, how to respond to him, how he moves upon you, how to not close yourself off when he's trying to lead you to do something. I pray this blessed you. I pray this edified you. I pray this allowed light and illumination to come so that your prayer life can go to another level so that you can experience the breakthroughs of God. Thank you for sharing this live stream. Thank you to all you destiny travelers while you're in route. I love you with the love of the Lord and I love you with my love. Be blessed.